There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. When I was in Canada a few weeks ago, the uh, public broadcaster, CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, on their website, in their book section, published a lengthy article of 34 new releases, new books being coming out in the autumn. I now, having lived in Japan and been an English teacher in Japan for a decade, always say autumn because nobody in Japan who speaks English knows the word fall, and I'm sick of teaching it, so it's almost disappeared from my vocabulary. But in the fall, and I perused it at some length when it came out on August 12th and then kind of forgot about it, but I'm going to make a video of the ones that appeal to me, which is, you know, not very many of them, but enough to make a video. I'll put a link in the show notes to the long article, which has a little write-up and cover and author photo of each of them with links to more information, but I'm, not, I'm only going to talk about the ones that interest me, so check the show notes, because some of you may well not agree with me on absolutely everything of a literary nature, so check out the article for your own lovely self. The one that I'm most excited about is first on the list that I noticed, and that is Anosh Irani has, I guess about a week ago in Canada, I'm not sure about the publication date other than in Canada, a collection of short stories out, translated from the gibberish, I love the title, seven stories and one half-truth. And there is a typo in the little article, it says, India ties the seven stories, blah, 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 together, and it should be Irani. That's embarrassing, CBC. Anyway, I am excited because I absolutely loved his last novel, The Parcel. I've talked about it at length on various videos. I haven't done a full review, but I will point you to a couple places where I've talked about it. I'm eager to read anything the man writes, even short stories, which I typically... Only want to read short stories by Mavis Gallant, Alice Munro, and now William Trevor. I will explore Chekhov, and maybe he will make my very short list of people who can actually write short stories. And there are some other more contemporary exceptions, but we won't clutter this video with uh, any of their names. But basically, it's those three, and because I loved Irani's novel, I'm, I'm curious to see if he can write short stories. Uh, published uh, August 20th. And they are all centered around his autobiographical experience of moving to Canada from India two decades ago. The next is a debut novel. And when I don't know anything about the author, um, I would want to do a lot more due diligence, reading some Kindle previews or checking it on Scribd if it's available there or whatever. But this one sounds interesting. Night of Power by Anar Ali. And she is a novelist and screenwriter in Toronto. She has had a short story collection out. And this novel is about a family that came to Canada 25 years ago as refugees, as South Asian refugees. They were expelled. Idi Amin expelled the South Asians from Uganda more than 25 years ago. Anyway, several, a few, quite a few decades ago. And it's about a family that came to Calgary and became dry cleaners. That sounds really... I want to find out what that's like. Michael Crummy is one of the few white guys, probably the only white guy I'm going to talk about because we all know how badly they write. Um, but Michael Crummy is not a crummy writer. Did I do that? Did I say that out loud? In that I really quite enjoyed his 2014 novel, Sweetland. He is a Newfoundland writer. Most people loved it even more than I did. I have a thing about Robinson Crusoe narratives and it kind of ended up that way but until it went that way I was loving it and it's a really strong novel and this is a new novel called The Innocents about a young brother and sister living in isolation in Newfoundland he also writes poetry and he has one other collection of fiction I don't know if it's a novel or what called Galore from 2009 uh, M.G. Vasanji is a Canadian writer of South Asian Kenyan descent, who I have never read. He's written uh, at least a half dozen novels and collections of short fiction in the last 20 years, and I have never got to him. He has a new novel. The novel is called A Delhi Obsession, about a Kenyan-born South Asian family living in Toronto. This man's wife dies, and he travels to India for the first time. 
and stuff happens. Vasanji has won the Giller Prize, Canada's most prestigious or remunerative literary prize. He's won it twice. I may not start with this unless I hear really good things about it, but I want to read something by Vasanji, and I know that there's some of his stuff on script. A debut novel from a writer born in Ethiopia, now living in Canada. Her name is Rebecca Fisaha, or Fisaha, and her novel is called Daughters of Silence. A Canadian flight attendant is stranded in Addis Ababa by a volcanic eruption. And she's of Ethiopian descent, so she visits her grandfather there. Yeah, I would have to do a lot of previewing and checking other reviews of it, but Ethiopian Canadian novel, I want to find out more. Uh, lots of indigenous Canadian writing is coming uh, to the fore, and with my snooty standards, I haven't found much that I've really loved, but I want to try everything, because this part of our Canadian mosaic, the, the originating part, the most important part, they will find their voices, and their voices will push all the white people out off the turtle into the sea where they belong. And so I have never read anything by Drew Hayden Taylor, and he has a new novel out called Chasing Painted Horses, following four young friends from a reserve north of Toronto. That's all I need to know. He is a Ojibwe playwright, author, and journalist from Curve Lake First Nation in Ontario. And here is a, a Somali tale from a Canadian writer born in Somalia, came to Canada during the Civil War in the 1980s lives in Toronto. His name is Nur Abdi. His debut novel is The Somali Camel Boy, about a boy raised in a Somali camel herding family, who, much like the author, flees to Canada. I definitely want to check that out. Another Indo-Canadian writer, Andrea Gunraj, has a novel called The Lost Sister coming out. I haven't been giving the, the dates, but they all come out this autumn. Sorry, I'm not organized. And those dates will be listed in the article. And like I say, unless you live in Canada, it'll probably be later. This novel, The Lost Sister, is about two sisters growing up in North Toronto, Jane and Finch area, an area populated by lots of immigrants from all over the world. And a tragedy befalls the family. I don't know if it's a debut or not. Another Indo-Canadian novel, The Shape of Family by Shilpi Somaya Gowda. Uh, she published two other novels. I've never heard of her. This is coming out in mid-October, and it is about a couple with a headstrong teenage daughter and a young son and tragedy strikes. Funny how that often happens, hey? The last one on the list, and the one that maybe, uh, aside from the Anosh Irani book of stories that I'm most excited about is I've never heard of this. This must have happened in Canadian literature before, but I've never heard of it, and I am so stoked. And if I don't get to it before, it's number one on my list for Women in Translation Month in 2020, is a novel translated into English from Cree. That is so fantastic! Blue Bear Women by Virginia Pesamapio Bordolo. Translated by Susan Oreo and Christelle Morelli. Now, I, I should actually check. It could be translated from French. Yeah, uh, I'm still excited, but it's not translated from Cree. Everything about this author on Google is in French. So she writes in French, translated into English. I'm still excited. It would have been, I, I must admit, more exciting to read a novel translated from Cree into English. But no, I'm still here for that. It's the story of a young Cree woman's search for her roots and identity. First published in 2007 in French, that's right. Set in northern Quebec. So, those are the ones that I'm interested in. There's a whole bunch more. Do any of these sound interesting to you? Anything else on the list that you might be interested in trying? I don't read much Canadian literature, and uh, that the reason why is the topic for another video that I might make in about 15 years. But these ones catch my fancy, so we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Oh.